Hello, my name is Nathaniel, and I'm aiming to make the OC tournament scene more accessible to beginners. If you're watching this video, you must be refereeing matches in an upcoming tournament. This video's goal is to make you familiar with the typical match procedure and the rules that come along with it. To demonstrate, I will use tournament sheets from the tournament series I run, Rutgers RGC Monthly. However, the information provided in this video should be applicable to any event. Before your tournament match begins, you should make sure that you have something called an IRC client downloaded. IRC clients allow you to interact with OC players in-game through an external program. For the purposes of this video, I will be showing how to download chat for OSU. Keep in mind, this may not work on Mac OS. In that case, you should download something else such as hex chat. The link to download chat for OSU will be in the description, as well as a written version of the guide that was written by myself. Now that we're ready to install chat for OSU, let's go to the forum post here and I'm a Windows user, so I'm going to click on Windows. Uh, if you're a Linux user, you can download it there as well. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. If your computer says it's a virus, it is not. All right, once chat for OSU installs, it'll open on your computer and it'll prompt you for a username and an IRC password. So your username is just your OSU username and your IRC password is actually a very sensitive piece of information linked to your account. Uh, it'll bring you to the old version of the OSU website where you should go ahead and log in uh, and then it will go ahead and give you your IRC password. All right, once you have your IRC password, which will be stated as the server password on the website, you can go ahead and paste it here and if you don't want to do this login process again, you can hit remember credentials. Once you do that, you should be able to log into chat for OSU. Now, keep in mind, if you don't have any chat rooms open in the top left, if you want to run these commands, you can always just go to the BanchoBot channel by typing in BanchoBot after clicking the plus button. Now that we're ready to go, we should find the players that are in our match. Typically, players for your match will be linked on a schedule sheet near the match ID of the match you've selected. For the purposes of this video, I will use the referee sheet from my tournament series, Rutgers RTC Monthly. So for example, let's say I'm a referee for this match here with the match ID demo. You can see here that the players are EML and for the purposes of demonstration, it's through Cepid. So once I have both the players, I know that who I'm going to need to message. Uh, 15 minutes before the match, you should message both the players, often in the associated tournament Discord server, indicating the match is in 15 minutes and the invites will be sent in 10 minutes. I must accept it's having a problem here. That's fine because we're sending this 15 minutes before the match, so we'll have plenty of time to prep. After this, both players have been notified and they're responsible for showing up. You can also message them in game if they don't show up close to when the match starts. Afterwards, the next thing we need to do is create the lobby. Typically, referee sheets will have a room creation command pre-pasted. It should be the name of the tournament abbreviated, followed by the players in parentheses with the verses in between. This should create a new tab on your IRC client. So with our referee match, there should be an associated sheet here. Some sheets will actually have links to the sheet you need to go to. So I'm going to click on the associated sheet here, and here is the room creation command in question. It has both the players' names in parentheses with the verses in between. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into the BanchoBot channel here. And you can see here it created a new tab with the multiplayer match. When the match is created, you should immediately open the MP link in a new tab and save it for later. Typically, referee sheets will have a text box to paste this link. This is what is used to verify results later on by other staff members. So I'm going to copy this link and on my referee sheet there is an MP link box right here. And now you can see it fixed some stuff. Next, you should type the command to set the room settings, such as whether the match is 1v1 or team versus. Typically, referee sheets will also have a command for this. So for example, I have a room command settings. I'm just going to copy and then go to the room in question 
and paste it. And you can see here, it made it a three slot room on Team Versus with Score V2 enabled. At this point, the multiplayer match is ready. You should invite all the players involved around 10 minutes before the match starts. Typically, referee sheets will have a command for this. If it says user not found, usually that means that the player in question is offline and you should message them in the tournament discord or public chat area at the start of the match to make absolutely sure they know showed. If a player does not show up by a certain time, typically there are penalties such as forfeiting bans or even disqualification, as I just mentioned. When players join, usually the team name on the left will be in the first slot or slots and the team name on the right will be in the slots afterwards. This ensures correct placements of players or teams if your match is being streamed. So for example, when the players join the room, I want to make sure EML is in slot one and Sepid is in slot two. If they're teams, everyone on red team is in slot one, two, three, four, etc., and everyone on blue team is in five, six, seven, eight, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite the players. My sheet has text boxes right here that I can paste here to invite them. And if, remember, if it says user not found, the user could be offline. All right, both players have been invited to the room. And then on chat for Osu, you can click on this little person icon and it'll show the players joining. Now that both players have joined the match, you can actually see they're in incorrect slots. EML should be in slot one. Switch slots, please. All right. Now that both the players are here, you should ask both players to roll. The roll is a number from one to 100 that determines the pick and ban orders. In this case, you can see Sepid rolled a 59 and EML rolled a 55. Because 59 is greater than 55, Sepid wins the rolls. Keep in mind uh, that depending on the tournament, the pick and ban orders might be different. Usually on the sheet you're using, when you implement the roll winner, it'll auto-generate all that you need to know. After the roll, the player or team banning must first ban a map. So you can see here, the first ban is EML. Some tournaments will have ban timers. When the ban timer runs out, the player or team forfeits their ban, or might give it to the other team, which is often indicated in the rules. Typically, referee sheets will have a command summary for this. Mine does not because I do not do ban timers. Ban maps cannot be played for the remainder of the match. So EML has the first ban, so he will pick a map from the map pool here that he does not want to play. EML ban hidden too. Therefore, I'm going to go to his first ban and select hidden too. And you can see that map will not be played for the remainder of the match. Remember to double check if there are multiple bans, the ban order for the tournament. Usually this will be on the uh, sheet as well. So you can see here it says AB, AB, with A indicating the first banning player. So it would be EML, SEPID, EML, SEPID. If it was AABB, it would be EML, EML, SEPID, SEPID. So you should double check in the rules what the order is. All right, SEPID's banning Hard Rock 2. And then according to the rules, EML bans next. Now, on the topic of email second ban, another rule that might pop up is not double banning. Double banning means the team cannot ban multiple maps with the same mod. For example, if EML were to ban hidden one and hidden or hidden three, one of the other hiddens, that would not be allowed. That's a double ban. And you can see here, he tries doing a double ban. Circles. Click the circles. So in this case, he's gonna have to ban something else. Yeah, and sometimes your players may not remember some of the rules, so it's important that you check them when players pick and ban maps. Circles. Right now, Sepid will ban his second map. Alright, Sepid bans DT1. All the bans are complete. After bans, the first team to pick will pick a map. Some tournaments will have pick timers. When the pick timer runs out, the player or team forfeits their pick or gives it to the other team, which is usually indicated in the rules. Typically, referee sheets will have a command somewhere for this. Map picks will alternate between teams until a winner is determined. For example, e Sepid is the first pick here, so I'm going to put in the pick timer. 
and it is Sephid's pick. Now, between points, uh, there is often usually a text command you can paste indicating the current score and who is picking the map. On my sheet, it's up here, and it instates the players with the scores, along with how many points you need to win, so in this case, two out of three, and how long the player that is picking the map has to choose a map. And remember, they cannot choose any of the banned maps or already picked maps. All right, in this case, Sephid picks Hidden 3. So once they select Hidden 3, usually there will often be a map or mod command that you can paste in. Now, once a map is picked, players will automatically be forced to use the mods that are selected here, which is often the default mods of the tournament, in this case no fail, along with the mod written down on the map that's being selected. For free mods, the map that Sepin mentioned that's actually not in this tournament, often you'll have a selection of mods you can choose from, which is often hidden or hard rock. Uh, to balance things out, sometimes those mods will also have multipliers. For example, if you have a free mod map where you can choose easy, sometimes it will double the points so that you get the full point bonus for using easy versus its normal half point bonus, which is 0.5 times. Regardless, now that Sepa picked this map, I'm going to go ahead and paste the map here. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put the mod command here. I'm also going to stop the timer using MP abort timer. All right, now that both players are ready and the map has been picked, I can go ahead and put the locked in timer, which indicates how long players have to ready up. Keep in mind, your tournament may have one or may not have one. You should read the tournament rules for more information. So both players will have two minutes to get ready for this song. All right, once both players are ready, I will go ahead and do the MP start command. The MP start command will allow the match to start in the specified amount of seconds. So I'm going to start this in five seconds. Once players are ready to go, as long as players aren't yelling that something in their OSU thing is breaking and you have to stop the match using MP abort, uh, you can just let the players go ahead and play their song. Now one thing to keep in mind is when players are picking maps, similar to double bands, there's also something called double picking where players aren't able to pick uh, maps with the same mod twice in a row. So for example, if EML were to pick no mod one, and then if this were Sepid's turn and he picks hidden two, because he picked hidden three last time, that would be two hidden maps in a row and that would not be allowed. And you should read the tournament rules for more information. In this tournament, for example, you can't double pick, so that would not be allowed. However, in this tournament, it allows no mod. So once again, Read the tournament rules for more information on that. Once the map is finished, uh, if you're using chat for Osu, it will display the scores of each of the players. In this case, Sepid scored more points, and there are no modifiers I need to keep into account, such as with the free mod map. Therefore, Sepid wins the map. You'll see on most sheets that the score will update to the correct number, and when you repaste in the score command, it will be updated to show the score and the next person that's picking, which is EML. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna skip forward a little bit and I'm just going to pretend that EML picked a map and that Sepid lost. EML is the one that won that map. And it is now one to one. Now, in a tournament, if you are at the last point possible, meaning in a best of three, you're on the third map, or if you're in a best of seven, you're on the seventh map, which essentially means players are tied at match point, you are forced to play the tiebreaker map. So for the tiebreaker map, it is always the tiebreaker map. With a tiebreaker map, typically it will be no mod or the free mod rules. So you can, if for example, if you can pick hidden or hard rock on free mod, for tiebreaker you can pick hidden, hard rock, hidden, hard rock, or no mod. So players would go ahead and pick the tiebreaker. For this example, let's say EML won the match. Typically, there'll be a command to say GG's to both players. I would go ahead and send this message saying congratulations to email for winning the match. Players can give their GG's and so on when they're done. And once the players are done talking and they've left or they've overstayed their welcome, you can go ahead and close the lobby. 
Closing the lobby is done with the MP close command, which removes clutters for streamers choosing which match to spectate, since it will show all matches with the prefix for the tournament. This is different than just leaving the lobby, which does not close the lobby. So I'm going to copy this. And you can see both players left. Now I type MP close, and you'll see it says close the match, and that this is closed and it is all gone. And with that, you're done with your tournament match. The last thing you should do is make sure the MP link is here, which will often then be displayed somewhere in the schedule or something along those lines. And there's often a match result command stating all the bands and the player scores along with who won, which you can often paste in your tournament's result links channel. So you can see here, it shows the round, the player that won, the scores, the link, and the bands, which is often most common. With that, you should be good to go. There are more semantics involved sometimes, but if you have any questions, you should contact one of the tournament's admins. Good luck with your tournament matches.